the black coffee. Morning Brown, Morning Brown. Zach, what do you need, Morning Brown? I can't decide if I look like a student teacher or Doctor Who. <laughs> hey Johnson, I want those reports on my desk Monday morning. What, what do you mean he's a robot? We gotta go back. Back. Back to Winnipeg. To Westworld. That's right, lads. I'm taking you back to Westworld. But I hear you say, well, what Westworld? is Westworld? What the hell? The Westworld? robot that... one, you darn tootin'. You bet your bottom dollar it's the robot one. What's coffee, you fuck? Oh, right, yeah. Look, I get it, lads. For us UK boys, not a lot of us got a chance to watch Westworld because, you know, it was on HBO and it kind of flies under the radar and stuff. Although I tell you what though, October of 2016, my god, it was just Walter Bloody Wall, I didn't know where to look, you had Westworld, boom, coming in, American Horror Story, Roanoke, boom, coming in, it, it was pretty much just those two, but they were just really good shows, alright, so, if you haven't seen Westworld, don't you go clicking off, you drag that cursor back down here, I'm not done with you yet, if you haven't seen Westworld, trust me, by the end of this video, you're gonna want to, let me get you caught up, so season one, it's Cowboy Land, alright, it's the distant future where this company called the Delos Corporation have made, essentially, Disneyland, but it's set in the Wild West and they're like robots so you go for a weekend you, you pay extortionate amount of dollar dues to go for the weekend and then you just get to play cowboys and Indians essentially and yeah imagine the sort of things people get up to yeah. Yeah. the series was great it was intriguing you had Anthony Hopkins as this mysterious creator you had people vanishing left right and center you had the robot learning that they're robots oh god it was good and then season two we were hyped and it was Fine, it was okay, it was a, a decent follow up. You know, I preferred the bit still set in the park, but you see, season two is where they clearly try and start to widen the world a little bit. Show, oh, but they show you some of the other parks because there's five parks, there's not just Westworld. Oh, no, 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 there's different worlds, so we're gonna get to them, don't even worry about it. And it was great. Uh, season three w w was okay. Daddy. But I think the biggest problem with a series like Westworld is they're never going to want to show you the park. And that's fine. A big part of Michael Crichton's work, you know, Michael Crichton, your boy. I'm going to pop some tags, only got $20 in my pocket. Oh. Michael Crichton, Michael Crichton, Michael Crichton, Crichton, Crichton. The, the guy that wrote Jurassic Park, well, that's the whole point. He would write stories set around these fantastic theme parks and stuff, because the whole moral was just stop fucking with nature. You'd never actually see the park when it was fully working. You'd see the best laid plans, but everything would always go to shit before you actually got there. It's not about the theme park, it's about what it's doing. So that's fine. I don't need to see silly Westworld hijinks. But let's be fair, lads, the funniest part of season one was when we were in the park. The most intriguing character was the man in black, because he was engaging with the park. He was making his own rules, but, you know, we were like, okay, who is this guy? So, okay, you saw the park working, and then you saw the robots in revolt, and then season two left us with this tease. You're teasing me. Of the world beyond, and this wider conflict. So, okay, I'm suggesting season one, it was fine. It's as is. We see the park working. Season two, we see the park in revolt. We see the robots starting to revolt. And we're going to pick up right where season two left off. It left us with this juicy little tease. You teasing me, you naughty naughty. That we're going to pick up from. But season three, are we going to see their version of the distant future? We're going to come into the modern world, so to speak? Hell no. We're going back to 1973, baby. Are you two boys? Westworld, year one. Westworld, the first purge. You know, taglines. Boy, have we got a vacation for you. It's the original tagline. It just it just fits. It's like poetry. It fits. Again, it's like poetry. It's sort of they rhyme. And we're going to have the original world. We've got Westworld, we've got Roman Empire and Medieval Times. I'm not sure about the names, but the boys can figure it out. Don't even worry about it. You've got your two series leads, Arnold and Robert Ford, who are these brilliant mad scientists who have invented these AI robots for the company. There's this brilliant line in season one where uh, Ford references the fact that they lived in the park for a few years just with the robots. For three years we lived here in the park, refining the host. Messing with them and stuff. So what about these two fabulous creators who are just being bombarded by cutthroat late capitalist America? I'm talking flares, I'm talking sideburns, I'm talking these geniuses are in the park discussing philosophies of life with Dolores and Maeve who obviously don't look any different. But then mid-season, boom, 
tragedy strikes. One of them gets pulled off the project and stuck into the medieval times land, which I'm now thinking we should call Kingdom Come. And, and well, it's not just their story. We'll have the lead story designer who's creating these narratives for these robots, but he's finding himself, he's writing himself into it. It's like falling in love with these characters that he's creating. And we'll have this really, really fun set piece where at some point he needs someone to work with who he knows will just not mess up and will do exactly what he says. So he actually sneaks one of the AI out of the park and into the corporate espionage. He rewires her so she thinks that she's this businesswoman and stuff, but then they get separated and she's sat in the reception and they're like, oh, is it business or pleasure? And she'll be like, what, what is business? What is pleasure? <laughs> You know, and it all gets mixed up, and then eventually this robot gets shoved in front of this this audience, right, who are giving this press talk, and they all think that she's one of the lead sort of story designers, and, you know, they're chit-chatting, and you've kind of got like a Larry King character, it's like, alright, alright, but what about you on the end? You've been awfully quiet. What do you think about the... What do you think about the ethics of what we're doing? And she gives this quite heartfelt, opaque monologue about, obviously, she doesn't mention the fact that she's a robot, but she discusses the sort of ethics behind AI and how people treat them and stuff, and the audience are bloody so astounded, I'll tell you that much. You know, because these violent delights have violent ends. It still exists in the world of the Westworld series 1, but there was this other uprising. It was long ago, and there was this massive cover-up, which is why nobody ever talks about it. A big theme in the original film and the book is that these no-name scientists talk about how the computers have gradually just started working for themselves and writing their own code and discussing things with each other that even humans can't understand. Oh yeah, yeah, I found the quote. We aren't dealing with ordinary machines here. These are highly complicated pieces of equipment, almost as complicated as living organisms. In some cases, they've been designed by other computers. We don't know exactly how they work. You see, we're already setting up the Rehoboam plot. Uh, so where does all this get us, lads? Well, the finale is the original Westworld. We're doing it. How Bates Motel just kind of gave up in the end and just did Psycho. Well, we're doing the exact same thing with Westworld. <laughs> mm. But of course, in the original Westworld, it wasn't two scientists who were the leads. It was this, these two guys that came to the park called Peter Martin and John Blaine, like the most 70s name I can think of. So we'll get your Paul Rudd and your Will Ferrell to come down, two comedy elites of the day, you know, one will have a moustache. And you know, it, it'll be like Wicked, right? It'll be a case of we're seeing the original story, but it's being told from the perspective of these two background scientists who are just watching these crazy guys running around. So it'll be your Roman world and your kingdom come that malfunction first, right? Just as in the film and the book, they're the ones where P uh, the robots start getting sentience first. So, you know, we'll follow the beats from the original story, which yeah, it's quite fun when the robots start kicking off. But then it gets kind of tame, like a like a, a, a snake bites one of the guys. And, uh, don't ask. It's going to lead to a full-on lockdown of, obviously, all the parks and the Delos campus. The two leads wake up in one of Westworld's brothels and the gunslinger challenges them to a duel. One of them, Blaine, is it's quite playful. He thinks it's a joke, but pfft, he gets shot. Martin manages to get backstage and he actually pretends to be a robot. You know, it's gonna be like that scene in Shaun of the Dead or Game of Thrones or whatever. Every franchise has done it at some point. Eventually, he throws acid at the gunslinger's face and he's all like, I'm melting! And these are all just beats from the original story, by the way. If it was me, I'd do something different. <laughs> The gunslinger uses like infrared to try and find them and stuff. He's been following them the whole time, uh, and he goes into Kingdom Come and he like he just burns it all down and stuff. Once it's all calmed down, we can tie it all together with a little bow tied with a ribbon. Um, where Del uh, you know we see Ford making Dolores and making Bernard. Okay, so if that's not got you hooked, I don't know what else. You all seem to like Chernobyl and uh, Br and uh, Br Bridgerton. That was set in the seventies, wasn't it? Could possibly. Might have been the bloody 1770s, but uh, was, ooh, we'd have gone blame. So now I address the executives of HBO and, and Jonathan Nolan and Lisa Joy, who are the showrunners. Listen, lads, what I'm suggesting here is low bloody scale. It's just a series of, you know, utilidors and back laboratories. You've got a few of them knocking around from the fringe days, right? You know what I mean? It's it's a case of like, you've already got the Westworld set, so you, which already looks dirty. So you just make it look dirty. A Kingdom Come, just go to Belfast, I've literally got half the sets from Game of Thrones just lying around. P pick a couple of them up. And then Roman World. I don't know, it's just bloody, it's just pillars, isn't it? Mm. But I've kept it low scale to give you time to work on series four, you see, so that when you come back, you can tie it all together. And really hammer one out and make it, you know, not shit. And I'm, I'm giving you thinking time, to be honest, lads. I'm helping you here, giving you a bit of thinking time. So when you come back with series four, it's not like 
Series 3. Because the story I'm suggesting all takes place in the past, right? It concerns only a small group of guests and employees and it can be largely covered up. So in the grand scheme of the Westworld franchise, this can just be a, a nod, just be a wink and a nod. Is it so much of a stretch to think that maybe a purge has already occurred and that Delos are just massively covering up? I mean, I wouldn't have thought so. I mean, you tell me, you literally had a scene where it was like four different versions of Ed Harris just having wee willy winky to essentially play out the I am Mrs. Nesbitt scene from Toy Story, like Jesus Christ. Westworld. I wouldn't say that at all. Westworld. Oh yeah, it'll be called Westworld One Little Spark because obviously while we're in there and while we're bigging all this up, we're gonna go big on the Disneyland imagery and um, subtext and parody and all those fun, all those full algorithm generating words. Westworld.